Hello. So, um, my name's Emily. Um, I run a lot of creative workshops uh, around Kent, working with children and adults. And today we are going to make a Miro inspired mini sculpture for Creative Focus and his Plinth project. So we're going to start off by talking a bit about Miro's work. So he is a Spanish kind of painter, sculptor, um, and we're kind of mostly looking at his sculptures today, but we're going to do a bit of drawing to get warmed up. So he did um, a lot of automatic drawing, which is kind of drawing from your imagination. So he kind of just drew whatever his like subconscious mind thought about. So we're going to start doing some drawings like that to kind of get us inspired to create some shapes to then build your sculpture. For So for this starting point, I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm just going to grab a bit of paper. And what will really help with this um, is drawing to music and kind of thinking about shapes and patterns that kind of come about when you're listening to the music and beats. Um, yeah, and so we're just going to kind of just doodle and see what comes out so you're not thinking too much about it you're just going to be drawing from your imagination and seeing kind of what shapes emerge from here and that's kind of what uh Miro based a lot of his sculptures around uh very surreal kind of shapes that may not make sense much okay so pencil paper I'm just going to do some doodles okay A scribble, a scribble first, but doodling, imagining these shapes coming from your imagination. Now it's completely made up, I had no plan. And from here, once you've done your kind of automatic drawing, we're then going to start selecting some shapes. So I've kind of got almost like this eye shape occurring, got this zigzag, almost like a sun shape and some flowers. And we're going to start creating a sculpture inspired by these shapes so you can kind of see what you've you know created through your drawings and then with your material kit you are then going to create a sculpture from these shapes so in your pack you should have a wooden block that we're going to start building the sculptures on um some masking tape hopefully or if you haven't got this hopefully you have some at home and um, you're going to have some PVA glue that we're going to water down and then wire, lots of wire, which I need to cut off. So we're going to be inspired by those shapes. So again, you can kind of, if you're, you know, a bit stuck, you can kind of look back at your drawings um, and see what you can build. But to be honest, you can just make it up from your imagination. That's what surreal is. It's something that we're not familiar with. It could be completely kind of odd and obscure, which is fun. So we've got this really kind of bendable wire, um, which we're going to start off with. And we're just going to be using a lot of tape within this workshop to kind of secure it. Um, but just be mindful. Obviously, this is a really long bit. Don't be poking it in your eyes or anything like that. You may want to work with a shorter bit, but you can cut it with scissors, which is quite good. So just normal scissors. Um, and you can start building your shape. So I have pre-made a sculpture, so I'm going to be inspired by what I've made before. Um, so I'm going to start off kind of just building. And this, you can just go completely wild. I'm going to show you some of his sculptures actually here. So this is... So you can see, kind of builds up these kind of really surreal shapes and interesting use of colour as well. So really, that one always looks like a character. So see what kind of comes out of your imagination. I think that's the main thing. And definitely from your drawings as a starting point. So with the wire, you can, let's get that into shot. You can secure it, you, know, you start building, but you can, you know, tab down a bit at the bottom. Sometimes more tape the merrier as well. That's what I find anyway. So, ah, done. Joking. 
but I'm going to start kind of building a shape that I've already kind of built. So I'm going to create like a, a base, like a stem. And sometimes it doesn't matter if things change as you're building. It could just, you know, be something completely random. Um, wire, you can obviously kind of wrap it around um, to attach it. I do secure it with uh, tape too, <laughs> to make it more sturdy. I want to make this piece kind of like a, almost like four walls on the structure because we're going to be stuffing it with some newspaper. Sometimes it's quite fun just to let the wire do what it wants. <laughs> See where it goes. Oh, it's definitely going to be different from my last one. But I think that's the main thing. Don't have too much of a plan. Because <laughs> it can always change. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you haven't got any sharp bits poking out. So it's creating some sort of shape. Or wire. Let's just start building on top because I've already... So once you're kind of like happy with your surreal Miro inspired sculpture or your kind of like your bones to your sculpture you are then let's try and get that, that, that around there just be careful with the sharp ends sometimes you may need someone to help you wrap it round because they can get quite shouldn't be too sharp but it's almost creating like a it's completely different to my other one but you can see I've kind of got a structure developing. And here, what we want to do is, I need to grab some newspaper. Newspaper to kind of stuff your sculpture. So just a little bit, screw it up. And just start creating, like making your sculpture 3D. So here you can also start involving <laughs> some more tape. So where I've created that frame, it's kind of like, it's staying there, you know? And then you can use your tape to kind of make it more of a, a solid thing. You can use as, you know, as much tape as you want, basically. And you can see it's starting to kind of take form. It could be as basic or as intricate as you like. Obviously I've made this first one pretty basic, but I could add some more decorative details on top. So I could create a kind of sun sculpture by putting some more wire around the top kind of bit. But you can see where I've just started to stuff it, it's creating a, a 3D form. So I know I've used an excessive amount of masking tape, but um, that's what I do. So yeah, you can add some more wire onto the top, so you can just bend it round, be really careful. If you've got pliers, you can use it, but the, it should be bendy enough that you can attach bits. And if it kind of wiggles off, you can just use a bit of tape, whoop, like that. adding bits, bit of detail. So once you're kind of happy with your uh, structure, your sculpture, I'm just going to stuff a bit more. You then can start uh, paper mashing. And for this, you can use newspaper, but hopefully in your kits, you will have some tracing paper. And I really like tracing paper because it's a bit more delicate and you can kind of create nice textures with it too. So I'm just going to cut off some squares to start using. And if you've got a little pot of water, we're just going to water down some PVA glue. 
So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. Play around. And I would just give that a mix as well. So it creates a nice kind of PVA watery consistency. And with your starting sculpture, you're just going to paint on some glue and you're just going to start layering up that tissue paper. And tissue paper is quite see-through, but don't worry because we're going to be painting and drawing on top of these. So you're just going to paste it on. So make sure you add the glue first and then put the paper, a tissue paper on top and then glue. And yeah, this is, I think I like to use tissue paper because you can, it's just a bit more moldable and it, you can actually, if you even scrumple it, it creates quite, quite nice um, textures. So you can, it's almost like creases, like a, like it's a dress or fabric. So need a bit more behind it. So I would, for this, I would do a couple of layers of tissue paper. It doesn't matter if it rips as well. Don't worry, but you just you just want it to be a nice even layer across the whole of the sculpture. And sometimes you can just dab it on. And with more delicate bits like the top bit, you can even just dip it into the glue. Sometimes a bit easier, but just be, and you can kind of wrap it round. You can start. Just be careful, don't get it soaking, <laughs> otherwise it will crumble, but you can get a nice, the brush is a bit easier with tissue paper. You can start to see that I'm putting up the sculpture there. So I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna show you one that I made earlier, very blue Peter. Ta -da! So this is a completely different shape, but you can see that I've covered the whole of the base with tissue paper, covered these little wire bits and it's got a nice even layer all round. And this is where the fun begins. So you can really kind of look back at Miro's sculptures. Sometimes he uses like block colors or you can be a bit more mon uh, monochrome or monotone and use kind of different shades of black or gray. Um, but I'm gonna use some color. And I think this is time for you to kind of have a bit of an experiment and play it too. I've got acrylic paints, but I've also got um, crayons and you can use pastels. So it's completely up to you. See what kind of resources you have around. So I've got um, some paints here. So I'm just gonna, obviously once you can start decorating once your sculpture is dry. So that'll probably take a day or so to see, just see what it feels like. So I've got some pastels here, I think, Pastels are actually really lovely to use on sculptures because you can create different tones. So you may want to have a bit of an experiment and play. So I'm going to start with some red paint. And we're just going to start painting it on. So I think we're going to do the base red. And it's lovely because it started to pick up all of the kind of details. You can kind of see just how it's starting to, look how messy my hands are, to starting to take shape. So I think it's just really time for you to kind of experiment and play and see what works, like what colours. I've gone for uh, lots of colours and like mixing and you can actually, you know, wait for it to dry a little bit and you can add a bit more tone into it. 
it's totally up to you kind of how you want to decorate your Miro sculpture. So if you wanted to be authentic to kind of Miro, he does a lot of kind of block colours. Or if you kind of just wanted to blend, like what I've done. So yeah, so there we have it. Your little miniature Miro sculpture. And it's looking very cute. And as I say, I've kind of gone, I've mixed lots of different colours. So you can be as wild as you want here, as surreal as possible. Don't really know what it's looking like, a little monster or something. So there. Make sure it's nice and dry. Just pop it on the, you know, pop it on your shelf, pop it wherever you want. And there you have it. Cool. Thank you very much.